Great, so that's recording now. Um, so the agenda for today is um, introduction to the team and to the programme, an overview of the community chess grants, so going over the purpose, aims and objectives, um, who can apply eligibility criteria, what we can't fund, uh, application process cycle, when to apply, step-by-step -step application guidance, what happens next, assessment and support. Um, we have a lot to get through today, but if there's time at the end, we will take as many questions as possible. Please don't raise your hand during the session, um, but you can post any questions in the chat and we'll be able to address them at the end of the session, um, or we can um, address them by email if we don't have time today. In terms of housekeeping, um, please do keep yourself on mute the whole time. And as mentioned, the meeting is being recorded and the recording will be available online. So if you don't wish to be seen, please do keep your camera off. Um, and a copy of these slides will be shared after the event. Over to you, Moyo. Okay. The following key terms will be used throughout the presentation. When we say fees, ZS, we mean voluntary and community sector. Organization and group may be used interchangeably, except for when specifically referring to structured groups of residents. When we say grant agreement, we mean the, uh, the uh, legal, legally binding agreement all organizations must sign to have fund re release. Schedule, with the, uh, when we say schedule, we mean parts of a grant agreement, such as a copy of your budget. And request means your request for funding often used interchangeably with projects and application or application. So I'm Moyo Adeneye, and I'm a grants and investment officer in the grants team. Thanks, Moyo. I'm Lisa, so I'm the grants and investment manager. We've got other people in the team who are not with, um, with us on this um, presentation. We've got Caitlin, some, some of you may have met her or know her. She's a senior grants and investment officer. We've got a new member of the team. He's not really, really new, but he hasn't been in the team for, for so long. Um, he's Tom and Thomas, Thomas Shaw. He's a senior grants and investment officer. We've got Claire. Claire is the strategic lead. And we've got Sue as well. Sue hasn't been in the team for very long as well. But we are all experienced, they are all equally experienced as all of us. So uh, Sue is a strategic delivery officer in the team. So I'll be going through the, uh, uh, telling you much more about the program. The grants program, we continue to focus on the overarching program objective, which is to deliver actions which aim to narrow the gaps the gap in, in, in outcomes between certain disadvantaged groups and the wider community. In addition to this, the two previous program priorities will remain for this year. These are to promote social inclusion, encourage independence and develop personal resilience, and also to build positive relations between different groups and communities that will maintain the high levels of community cohesion in ACME. I hand over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Moyo. Um, so this table just gives an overview of all of the grants programs open for applications this year. Um, so these have been discussed further in separate information sessions, but if you want more information, you can look at our website. So we have our project grants program, which replaces our old main and small grants um, program. And um, this is for applications of up to 10 or 20,000, depending on the income size of the organization. And the projects are for up to 12 months in duration. Within project grants, we have a separate strand for children and young people's grants. And this aligns to our old main grants, small grants and holiday play scheme grants. And this strand is being delivered in collaboration with colleagues in Young Hackney, which we're really excited about for this year. Mm. We've restricted the income size for this strand, meaning organisations can only apply with an income of between £10,000 and £1 million. So Community Chest, which we'll talk about in more detail in today's session, will remain similar to previous years, but this year we will have four rounds of funding and have also limited the group size to those with an income of less than £10,000 per year. 
This is so we can focus on ensuring that community chess grants reach the grassroots groups who the funding is intending to support. We also have a new strand for this year called Community Infrastructure. Um, grants of up to 45,000 will be available, although we anticipate most grants will be around 10 to 25,000. And this is a two stage application process, which is open from now. Um, there is an information session on this taking place next week if you'd like to know more. So we encourage you to sign up for that. And um, the link for that is on our website. So this is an interim year of the programme. So if you do want to know more about these other grant schemes or our overall approach to grants this year, um, there's a recording of our recent grants launch event on the website. Um, and you can also look at the VCS prospectus to find out more. So back over to you, Moyo. So we will be telling you more about the community chairs grant, like uh, Lisa said. The purpose of community, cha community chairs grant is to fund short term or a one off at, um, activities working towards the program objective that I mentioned before and priorities mentioned. As a reminder, these are to promote social inclusion, encourage independence and develop personal resilience, and also to build positive relations between different groups and, and communities that would maintain the high levels of community cohesion in Nakim. Applicant organizations must have an annual income of less than 10,000 per year. So if your income is more than 10,000 per year, don't you, you shouldn't apply for community chairs. Project should be for short-term activities or one-off projects, no longer than one year in length. And at least 80% of beneficiaries must be ACNE residents. Organization may hold more than one community chairs grant per financial year if their projects do not overlap. The maximum grant amount is 1,000 pounds. Past examples of community chairs grants include a free, I'm, we're just giving you some examples of the past um, grants that we have in, if we, we had in community chairs. This, a free outdoor event to bring the community together and also development of a small community garden in a dense housing area. We accept applications from, these are the organizations that we accept organizations from, unregistered community groups, charitable inc incorporated organization, registered charities, charitable companies, commun community interest companies, social enterprises, structured groups of residents. What is a structured group of re residents and why do we fund them? So I'm going to tell you more about this. A structured group of res residents is a formal group of people who are not registered, uh, registered as a charitable organization in any formal way. They may be an established group who have been meeting for a number of years or a group who have recently formed for a one-off event or purpose. For example, group of four residents who live on the same street waiting, wanting to organize a neighborhood clean up event. Six parents at the same nursery wanting to organize a Kiara celebration day in their community hall. Now, if your organization is a social enterprise community interest company, you are only eligible to apply for a grant if you are legally required to operate on a wholly not-for-profit basis and can prove this. T typically, this means that 100% of surplus funds are re reinvested into the organization. Executive directors operate in a voluntary capacity and not as paid shareholders. As an indicator of the above, there is no profit distribution, no profit distribution, distribution uh, distribution plus an, an asset lock in the gov in the governing document. If you are if you are at, at, at all un unsure about this, please don't hesitate to contact us with your concerns and probably preferably what you will use as proof to demonstrate you are a not for profit organization and we will let you know what the category you should seek. So if you are unsure, just let us know and we will tell you more of which category you can choose. The VCS grants program does not accept application for F, 
for any of the following. So if you if you are delivering or your project focus on any of the following, we do not complete our application. We do not fund anything to do with this. These are political, political or, or exclusively religious activities over yes, allocated or apportioned at risk materially in excess of those used in similar work carried out by the organization. Generally, we will not expect over overheads to exceed our to exceed around 20% of the total value of your grant application. We won't fund capital or building costs. Capital costs can only be applied for if it directly relates to the funding ask, and only then if it is a small part of the total cost. Cost paid or liabilities incurred before the start date of the grant. The cost of work or activities that any other person or organization has a statutory duty to undertake. Activities undertaken outside of ACME, although there may be some exceptions. For example, for example, ACME residents may be assessing specialist courses, venues, or trips. Previous debts, including contingent liabilities, possible charges relating to past events. Cover for something that may not occur, contingencies. Interest charges or other costs resulting from delaying payments due to creditors. Service charges arising on leases. Higher purchase and other credit arrangements. Depreciation of fees assets paid for by these grants. Any costs that are not outlined within the grant application. Applications for an individual or where an individual receives the main benefits. So we won't fund any of this. I hand over to you now, Lisa. Thank you, Moyo. So the exact application process does differ slightly per grant scheme, but as a general overview, so the first stage is plan. So guidance documents for each scheme are available on the website, and we strongly recommend you take time to read and understand all of these resources to help plan your application. Um, in addition, there's information sessions such as this to help you over the coming weeks. So when you're ready to apply, all applications must be made via our online application portal ahead of the deadline. We're unable to accept late applications. So if you're experiencing any difficulties with the portal, please do contact us in plenty of time so that we can help you. Please don't leave it until five minutes before the deadline because there won't be a lot we can see to help you. So just factor in all of this when you're planning to submit your application. In the assessment phase, so once your application has been submitted, the grants team will process this, ensuring that groups meet the eligibility criteria and that there aren't any errors on the application forms, such as start dates, etc. And we'll then conduct due diligence checks based on the policy documents that you submit. Your application will then be passed on to a team of trained volunteer assessors from both the council and from the voluntary and community sector, and they will score your application and meet as a grants panel to make decisions on which applications will be funded. Please note that we will always receive more applications than we can ever fund. So assessors need to make really difficult decisions based on the information provided in your application, as well as taking into account what else we're funding to ensure that we have a good geographical inequality spread around the borough. When decisions are made, applicants will be notified and unsuccessful applicants will be given the opportunity to get feedback from the team. The next stage will be agreement and payment. So successful organisations will be contacted with grant agreements that will be issued and signed electronically and the payment process will commence. All organisations are paid through our supplier management system. Once you've received your funding, you're in the delivery phase of your grant. So please deliver your grant as outlined in your application and grant agreement. If you do need to make any changes to your grant, then please do contact your grants officer to discuss this in advance of making any changes. And finally, you'll be in the reporting stage. So you'll be asked to submit a short written end of grant report on our system about a month after the end date of your project. Your grants officer will provide feedback before closing off your grant. Any unspent funds will need to be returned to the council and will go back into the grants pot for the next round of funding. Back over to you, Moyo. Thank you. 
as I mentioned earlier, we have we have four runs of um, community chairs in the year. So the, the table that Lisa has presented is described the four runs that we will be running this year. The first round is opened now. So this is our first round that has just that's opened. And this will close on the 25th of April at 5 p.m. This is for projects taking place between June and August. Round two, with the application we open in July for projects taking place between September to November. And round three, we open in October for projects taking place in December to February. Round four, application we open in January for projects that is taking place up to March. So we cannot fund projects starting after March as this program is for this financial year only. We do not accept applications after the deadline of 5 p.m. So it's advisable you submit your application on time and don't leave it till the last minute. Please ensure that you give yourself enough time to apply. So we've I think we've given you more than enough time. So don't leave it to the last minute. If you are unsuccessful in one round, you can apply again for the next round. But we encourage this these applicants to seek feedback on why the application was unsuccessful in the first instance before reapplying. This is very, very important because the competition is really tense, it's really high. We cannot fund anyone, everyone. But if you come back to us and we, we give you feedback on why the application has failed, if then you can improve on your application. That doesn't mean the application, your application will be successful in the, in the following round, but it is it is good for you to, to get feedback, not just to resubmit the same application. Thank you. I hand over to Lisa now. Thanks, Moyo. And yeah, just to emphasize about the feedback, not only is it helpful if you're reapplying to, to our funds, but also just generally to be able to get feedback for future applications you're supplying to other funders as well is always helpful. Um, so what we're going to do now, um, so when you're ready to apply, you have to submit your application on our online grants portal, which I'm going to show you um, what that looks like in a second. If you don't have a login already, you'll need to set that up. Um, and then you can log on to the application. Um, do you save your process? It does save your process as you, um, your progress as you go along, but we really strongly advise that you um, have a, a copy of your um, questions and answers offline, so on a Word document or something, just in case something happens with the portal and you lose connectivity or something. It has happened before, so please do have a, an offline copy of, of your answers um, so, so that you can do that. So yeah, I'm going to show you um, a little bit of the form and then we're going to um, go step by step through the questions on the application and talk about what those questions are looking for and how assessors will be scoring them. So this is where it gets technical. So I'm going to try and open the application form now. Hopefully you can see this opening. So this is what the portal looks like. Um, so you log in like so, hopefully it will work. So when you first um, go onto an application, it will take you to an eligibility quiz. So this is essentially to check if you're eligible for the grant. So in this case for Community Chest, so your organisation has an in annual income of less than 10,000, you're applying for a grant of less than 1,000, yes. Uh, we operate as a not-for-profit, yes. 80% of the beneficiaries will be Hackney residents, yes. Uh, and we will upload the following policy documents with our application, yes. And our project is starting this financial year, yes. So you can submit. It's really important um, if you can't answer yes to any of those questions, then you won't be able to progress to the next stage of the application because it means you're not eligible. So do answer those questions honestly so you don't waste your time applying if you're not eligible. Um, so this is what the application form looks like. So 
just I'll briefly scroll down so you can see where you fill in the different um, answers to the questions. Um, and you can navigate along here as well to see um, the different sections of the application that you'll be asked to fill in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come off here and go back to our presentation so I can um, give you that step by step guidance to each of those questions. So section one of the application is um, for details about your organization. So this section isn't scored, um, but question 1.8 asks, what does your organization do? And this is a really good opportunity for you to tell us about your organization in a little bit more detail. Um, so a good answer here will give the assessors a really clear idea of what you do and why you exist. And that helps set the tone for the rest of your application. So do you take some time to think about this? You know, if you're a group of residents that's formed for a specific purpose, make sure that you've really outlined that here and, and give assessors a flavor of, of why you exist and, and what you're doing really. So section two is probably the most important part of the application as this is the bulk of what you want the funding for. Um, so we don't mark your application based on spelling and grammar and things like that, but we do need to be able to understand what you're saying. So make sure that you're clear. You can use bullet points or, you know, subheadings if you want to, to, to make it clearer and more understandable. And you might want to ask someone who knows very little about the project to have a read through to see if they understand it. Um, so just to say, we'll always be proportionate in our assessment. So this means the more that you're asking for, the more detail we would expect. So community chess grants are um, quite relatively quite small in the grand scheme of our grants. So we're not expecting, you know, a very, very long answer here. But um, we just want to understand what, what you want to do. And, and we need to be able to understand that so that we can assess your application properly. So question 2.1, project summary. So this is essentially the, the title of your project. So a summary of what you want to do. Um, question 2.2 is where the project will be delivered. So just a bit of a tip. If your um, project is being delivered outside of Hackney or perhaps near the borders of Hackney, just make sure you're being really explicit on, you know, how 80% of your beneficiaries will definitely be Hackney residents so that that that's really clear in your application. Um, 2.3 is the project start and end dates. Um, so remember your project can't last longer than 12 months from the start date and the start date must be in this financial year. Um, do allow enough time for your funding to come through. Um, so look at that table that we provided a few slides ago to work out you know, when you have to apply, when you'll get your money by. Um, and just a reminder that we don't fund retrospectively, so we can't fund something that happened last year or a few months ago. It, it has to be something that's happening um, in the future. So um, question 2.4, um, this is one of the most important Oh, I'm sorry, the slides. Yep, they've updated now. So this is really, really important. And um, so here you're asked to choose um, the grants priority that your project is working towards and um, talk about this in more detail. So make sure that you include what the project will achieve, how it fits with the priority, how it will achieve this, how it will be delivered, who will benefit and why. So really just covering all the main parts of, of what you want the funding for. Um, so there is a lot of um, a lot to cover in this question. So um, make sure you're thinking about each of these bullet points when you're writing your answer. Um, if an assessor still doesn't understand what your project is after reading this section a few times, then it probably won't be a very successful application. So just make sure you're really clear here and clearly link your project and your um, chosen priority really well as well. Um, don't imply anything, don't make assumptions that the assessors will know who you are, just be very, very clear about everything um, in, in this question really, because that's really, really important. Um, so Moyo is going to give um, a few examples now. So um, we've told you the programme objectives, the grants programme objectives, so we would like you to think about how your idea fits into one of the grants of program objectives and choose accordingly. I'll give you some example of previous years projects. The project 
to support young adults experiencing food poverty to cook and make healthy cho choices fit, fitting well to priority one. For priority two, an intergenerational mentoring scheme links well to building positive relationships between different groups. Some projects may feel that they contribute to both. That is okay. You can reference this in your answer, but remember that it is better to align strongly and clearly with one objective than to try and cover both vaguely. Also, this is how assessors will be looking at your answer to determine sources. Assessors give a rating in each section and then an overall rating to the application based on this. For example, if an assessor rates this section as good, they will know that they will know they will, they will know that what was missing, they will note what was missing if it wasn't cleared up in another section. So they will look at the section that you've that that, that they've assessed and if it's good, they'll mark it as good. If it first fell short in that area, they, if you wrote it, we prefer you to write each to cover every question asked in, this, in each area. But if that question is in another area, they can they pick it up as, as, as well. And then it goes to the panel and this is discussed in the panel and compared with other applications. Thank you, I hand over to Lisa now. Thank you, Moyo. And I'm just to apologize, there seems to be a slight delay with me pressing the next slide and it coming up on the okay. screen. So I'm really sorry about that. But um, yeah, please do bear with us. It, it's just being a bit slow today. Um, so question 2.5. Um, so this is asking how your project will be run and managed. So just make sure that here you're providing relevant background experience of your organization and staff. And discuss all the elements of your project planning and delivery so including the planning stage the delivery stage monitoring and evaluation so you might want to um, include like your project planning time scales and milestones and things like that um, so this section is just really important for assessors to be reassured that you have the skills and the expertise to deliver your project and that, that you're going to be able to do that so make sure you um, include all the information about that in this section um, and now Moye is going to talk yes. through the scoring criteria for this one when it eventually comes up on the screen i'm sorry okay. about this <laughs> so it's there now isn't it yes very good answers will be very clear so it should be up, up now Moye. Up, up now oh it's up now like Lisa said, we just want to know that the, your organization is capable of um, managing the project properly. Very good answers will be very clear on how the project will be managed, who will be involved. So you say who are going to be involved in the project and what relevant skills and experience they will bring. So just detail your answer, just put it there clearly. And when the assessors read it, they are not marking your English. So all they want to see is just to be able to know that the project can be managed properly. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Moye. Yeah. So um, the next question um, is asking about project risks. So um, never be subtle or imply things about risk. It always be very explicit. If your project is working with children or vulnerable people, you should always be referencing safeguarding in your risk section. And you might also want to think about things like COVID. So what kind of risk COVID could um, could have to your project. Um, all projects, large and small, present risks. Um, so in this section, you're expected to complete your risk assessment, clearly outlining what risk might occur, how these will be mitigated. Um, and a good application will clearly identify any relevant risks, assess the probability of it happening and the impact if it did, and articulate how this will be mitigated in practice. 
So this will obviously look um, very different for different projects and is assessed by um, assessors for comprehensiveness. Um, but, but make sure you're just really covering everything. Don't just say refer to our um, risk assessment or something like that. You have to be really explicit in this answer about answering all of those um, key points about risk. Over to you, Moyo. Yes, as Lisa has mentioned, um, a very good answer will clearly acknowledge the main risks and have a clear and appropriate response for each one. Do not, um, just think of all the risks that you can think of and mitigate it. That's all we want to see. So that if anything happens, you are able, you've got, you are, you, 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 you've thought of it and you, you've got the mitigating factor there. So over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Moye. So section three is all about your budget. So um, this is another scored section. Um, just to let you know, there are lots of calculator buttons on this page um, when you um, have a look at the application online. And this is to help you ensure your budget breakdowns are correct. So um, do make sure your budget breakdown makes sense in conjunction with the rest of your application. If you start talking about items in your budget here that aren't discussed elsewhere in your application, then assessors will be a little bit confused. So for example, if you're um, if you're applying for a um, a day trip somewhere and you've talked about coach hire and things like that, and then in your budget you start talking about hiring a venue in Hackney, we're mm -hmm. going to be a little bit confused about what you actually want this money for. So just make sure you're being um, really consistent. Um, and also, I can't emphasize enough how much you should make sure that your numbers add up and, and all mm. make sense because you'll be surprised how many applications we get um, that the amount they're asking for is a little bit different to the budget breakdown but Moya is going to um, talk a little bit more about this now so on budget it is like Lisa has mentioned it's so so important to look at your budget properly make sure it aligns to your application make sure it adds up so 3.1 is asking you how much you are requesting from us for your project you only need to complete 3.2 if you're asking us to part fund your project for example if your if the whole project cost is three thousand pounds and you're asking for one thousand from us and the remainder you can only ask for 1,000 anyway. <laughs> so, and the remainder is from another funder. Remember the maximum you can apply for is 1,000 pounds. So you tell us about other funding that um, it's going to be added to the, it's, it's that we are part funding the project, but you are getting more fund, funding from other uh, funders. That is what we want to like see. So Lisa, to you. Thanks, Moye. So question 3.3 .3 is your budget table. So again, this is another really important section as it tells us about how you've costed your project and what you're spending on. And um, so there are eight rows provided in this. You don't have to use all of them, um, but also there's space below in a box if you want to give us more details as well. Um, so there are three columns in the budget table. So the first one on the left hand side is your expenditure heading. So telling us what you want to apply for. So in this example, we've got um, venue hire at 40 pounds per hour, um, 1.5 hours times 20 weeks. Um, so you're requesting £1,000 from us, which is the middle column, and you're requesting £200 from other sources, which is the column to the right. Obviously, if you're just applying for funding from us, you can leave that last column blank. Um, so that's kind of what the budget table looks like. Underneath the budget table, um, as I mentioned, there'll be these little calculator icons and these calculate um, the total project cost as per your budget breakdown. So um, please do use these calculator buttons. They're there to help you just make sure everything's correct. Um, and always use these to check that everything you've put in your table is adding up correctly. So as we mentioned before, we see um, a lot of projects fall down um, because what they've given us in their budget breakdown doesn't add up to the, what they've asked for in, in question 3.1. So just make sure you're always double checking um, those figures to make sure it's all correct. Um, and Moyo is going to talk to you the, the very you. good answer now. Thank you. 
So we are still on budget. A very good answer will provide thorough, detailed, and realistic costs based on the project information provided. The budget items will clearly link to the narrative, and this enhances the overall clarity of the project. Lisa, you can phone. Thanks, Moyo. So um, 3.4 um, is another optional question, um, but this is the opportunity for you to tell us um, if you're getting other funding from other sources for this project, where that funding is coming from. Um, so if you answered in um, 3.2 that, that we were part funding the project, then you can give us details about that other funding here. Um, so if you have put that you're getting part funding, it's really important that you do put the information in this question because it will help us to understand how viable your project is. So, um, you know, is your funding secured or not? Where is it coming from? If it's not secured, um, what are the risks to the project if you don't get that funding, etc.? So it's an optional question, but if it is part funding, then you really should um, should be answering this. Um, also, just to say, question 3.5 is asking for your organisational um, annual income from the last year. So um, this should match any accounts that you're submitting and with your application. And obviously it has to be less than £10,000. Um, if you didn't have any income, um, you can put zero in here. That's absolutely fine. But this is for us to check eligibility. Um, so Moye is going to talk through section four now. Section 4 is for you to input your organization's bank details. This is to speed up the process of payment if you are awarded funding. We don't want to hold your payment. We want to pay, uh, pay you quickly. Please make sure you complete this accurately as mistakes could cause issues with paying your grant if you are successful. We've had issues with this in the past. Make sure you all the details you put is correct and complete. We can delay grant and it's asked to our work as well if it's wrong. If you are a group of residents and don't have an organizational bank account, you will need to put an individual's bank, bank account and complete the additional questions underneath. This is to confirm the names of three committee members who are responsible for signing off all financial transactions. Over to you, Claire. Um, Lisa. Thank you, Moye. Yeah. Um, so section five is for attachments. So this section isn't scored, but it's really important to upload your due diligence documents with your application, as this is all checked by the grants team to ensure you're eligible to apply. So the exact documents you need does vary slightly if you're an organisation or a group of residents. Um, so that's outlined on this table here. Um, but generally, we need an official governing document, so constitutional articles of association. Um, if you're a structured group of residents, a document outlining your aims and guiding principles is sufficient for that and outlining who your committee members are. Um, so if you are a registered group, we also expect um, an equality and diversity policy and a health and safety policy. Um, if you're a structured group of residents, there's more leniency around this. Um, so we wouldn't necessarily expect policies, but um, for health and safety, for example, we might expect a risk assessment or something that shows that you've thought about health and safety for your particular project. Um, for um, registered groups, we will expect your um, most recent um, financial um, accounts for the previous financial year. Um, if these are audited or externally verified, great. Um, if not, because you're a small group, that's absolutely fine. Um, anything you've got really to confirm your income and expenditure. Um, so that could be um, an income and expenditure report, some kind of spreadsheet or financial forecast, something really just to show us um, how much you're getting in and how much is going out. Um, similarly, with a structured group of residents, you may not have any income if, if you form for a specific purpose, so that's absolutely fine. But um, something like um, a, an income or expenditure report or a financial projection for your project or something, just to reassure us that, um, that you can manage the finance side of things. 
Um, we'll also um, expect um, a recent redacted bank account, um, bank statement apologies, um, so something that will match the account details that you provided in the previous section. And again, this is just for our due diligence purposes to make sure that the um, funding is going into the correct account. Um, certificate of um, insurance that shows you're covered for your project and activities. Um, again, with very small groups or groups of residents, you may be applying for insurance as part of a cost of your, um, your funding, which is absolutely fine. So we'll just need to see proof of that when you've purchased it before your event can go ahead um, or, or whatever it is that you need the insurance for. Um, and if you're working with um, vulnerable adults um, or children, then we'll need um, copies of safeguarding policies and procedures. And um, so that's really important, whether you're a structured group of residents or not. If you're working with children or, or vulnerable people, then you'll need to factor in things like DBS checks and safeguarding policies, etc. Um, so in terms of the practicalities of the form, you are given space to upload each of your documents. So make sure that you press the upload button after each document um, in order to attach them properly. This can sometimes be a bit tricky. So we do have a video on our website just talking you through how to do this if, if you want to see um, more of that. Um, we know this can seem a little bit overwhelming and daunting, so do contact us if you have any questions about any of this. Um, and we might contact you after you submitted your application if there is anything missing or if we need to clarify anything with you. So do look out for emails from the team um, once you've submitted your application. So back over to you, Moyo. Thank you, Lisa. So the last part of the form is the declaration. You must seek to confirm that you are authorized to submit the application, that the information you have provided is correct, and that you understand the condition of the grant should you be successful. You must include your name and position. If you are not already signed, if you are not already signed up to our newsletter and would like to be, you can tick 6.2 and we will add you to our mailing list. Over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Moyo. Mm. So what happens next? So as mentioned, we'll always receive more applications than we're able to fund, unfortunately. Um, so once you've submitted your application, it will undergo eligibility and due diligence checks by the grants team, and it will then be assessed by volunteer assessors from across the council and the VCS. Volunteers are trained and given guidance documents to support them make fair assessments of your application using the scoring criteria that we mentioned today. So we will be recruiting volunteers over the coming weeks. So please do look out for further information about this and sign up if you'd be interested in taking part. And it's a really good way of understanding how the process works from our side and it could really help you with future applications as well. So do think about that. So the strongest applications will be discussed at an assessment panel and during that panel we'll discuss applications in comparison to each other and as mentioned before we'll take into consideration other information such as equality, strategic objectives and spread around the borough and as also mentioned we will always offer feedback to unsuccessful applicants so we encourage you to think about that for future applications. So back to you Moyo. Thank you. So we've, we have a list of some of our key documents and resources available to support you with your application further. Our website will always contain all the up-to-date information and links that you need, including the links to the application forms. Lisa showed you that before and went through it with you. Our, our VCS Prospectus gives you an overview of the whole grants program as well as information about general eligibility. We, it, it, it's advisable, we strongly advise that you read the prospectus, we read the Gandhi's document even before you start the application. So there's a guidance document for each grants program, which includes more information and guidance on specific application questions. We have compiled a document with information on general support available for VCS organizations. We also have some resources on our website which you can use to help you with checking your policy documents for due diligence purposes. New for this year, we have also created some video resources to guide you through specific processes. 
For example, how to log into the application portal. We will keep adding videos as and when the need arises. Please use all these resources. It will help you to complete your application forms. And generally, it's good to read it so that you, you'll be able to complete your application form properly and you need to be clear to you what we are requesting from you. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Moye. Um, so additional support is available via our team and also through um, partners as well. Um, so do contact us if you've got any general questions about the programme um, and we'd be happy to help you. Um, Hackney CVS are also able to provide bespoke application support through their organisational development team and they'll be running application sessions between February and April to help with these specific grants programmes. And the East London Business Alliance, known as ELBA, are able to offer an application review service where trained business volunteers can look through your application and provide comment and feedback. Um, just to let you know, Hackney CVS and Elba's application support services are free for VCS organisations to access. So it's a really amazing um, resource available for the VCS. Um, so I'm now going to hand over, I think Natasha from HCVS is here um, to just briefly talk through their organisational development offer. So thanks for joining us, Natasha. If you want to um, unmute yourself and talk us through this slide, that would be great. Hello, hi. Um... So I'm Natasha from the HCBS and I work as the marketing officer at the organization development um, team. I'm going to go through the slides to um, talk about what we do. Is that okay if I share my screen? Um, yeah, what, what we've done before is um, we've just talked through the slide and then I share the whole slide pack afterwards. So okay. we can do that if yeah. it's easier, if that's okay. Okay, okay. Thanks, Natasha. Okay, so we offer um, free support sessions for people that join our training program. And we also um, help you um, like get partnership support when you're like linking up with other organizations. And we offer hot dusk in space at affordable rates. And also we have a meeting room available for people that are interested. And on our website, you can find all the latest news on funding and resources opportunities. And we also help you with um, you know dbs checks and we send out various newsletters per year so we could advise advertise your um, events and promote your activities also on our social media pages as well and we offer like a range of fundraising support so we could help you with your project idea and we could also help um, like read through your funding bid assist you with your funding bid as well if you need any support and give you advice and also our training program really does help you with um, you know, your fundraising support as well, because we do offer training around fundraising. And yeah, we offer a range of training actually per year. So it would be great if you know, people could attend. And we also have a workforce development program. So once you attend our training session, we will support you and your staff and your volunteers in applying what you've learned into you know, your daily activities. So we will always be there to support you whenever you need it. Um, and we can offer um, meetings and all these meetings are free as well. So you can call us at any time, you can meet with us and we can really support you and your organization in moving forward. Um, Thank you so much, Natasha. That's that's yeah. really helpful. Um, so yeah, just to say, um, Natasha has prepared um, a pack of slides for us, which we're going to be sending out um, after this session, which will give you lots more information about each of these bits and yeah. links on where to sign up and contact them, etc. But that's a really helpful overview. Thank you. Um, fantastic. So um, as mentioned before, after this session, we'll be in touch um, with the copy of the slides, a copy of HCVS's slides, um, and also a short feedback form. Um, so please do um, give us any feedback on today's session or our approach to grants generally. It's really helpful for us to um, see what we're doing well and what we can improve for future programmes as well. Um, as mentioned, the recording of this session will be made available online via our website, so please do back, um, check back over the coming days um, to, to see that link online. You can obviously watch it back or share it with any colleagues who weren't able to make it today. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop recording and then see if anyone has any questions for the last few minutes um, of the session today. So I'm going to stop recording now.